This is part three of the notes on carbon compounds, the molecules of cells. This part is about lipids. Lipids are what we call hydrophobic. That, that doesn't mean they're afraid of water, it means they repel water. This includes things like fats, oils, phospholipids, and steroids. Mostly, lipids are made of carbon and hydrogen with a little bit of oxygen, and they're combined by nonpolar covalent bonds. Most are very good at storing energy. Remember the worksheet that we did that said the more carbon um, atoms there are in a compound, the more energy there is stored, or the more energy can be released by, the, by cells. Some of these lipids are necessary in certain structures. It's necessary to have lipids in your nerve cells and uh, every, various other things. Phospholipids are a very important part, major part of your cell membranes. Lipids, even though we talk about them with the other macromolecules in this unit, they're not really macromolecules nor polymers. They're made of smaller pieces and they vary a great deal in structure and function. But since they're still biological molecules, we're, we study them along with the other molecules of cells. The main kind of lipids that we normally think of are fats and oils. These are made from two kinds of smaller molecules, glycerol and fatty acids. A glycerol is a three carbon compound that contains several hydro three hydroxyl groups. The fatty acids have a carboxyl group plus a hydrocarbon chain that's 16 to 18 carbons long. So lots and lots of carbon and hydrogen present in this. Uh, the hydrocarbon chain, is, remember the hydrocarbon is composed of carbon and hydrogen almost entirely. Fats are solids at room temperature. They are mostly what we call saturated fats, which means that there are no carbon to carbon double bonds. Saturated in this term when you're talking about fats means saturated with hydrogen. It's, have, it's holding all the hydrogen it possibly can hold. Oils, on the other hand, are liquids at room temperature. They are mostly unsaturated. They have at least one carbon to carbon double bond, if not more than one. Now, glycerol and fatty acids combine, like the other molecules we've talked about, by means of dehydration synthesis. In the case of the lipids, that occurs between a hydroxyl group of the glycerol molecule and the uh, I'm sorry, a hydrogen of the glycerol hydroxyl group and the hydroxyl part of the carboxyl part of carboxyl group of the fatty acid chain. And these, these two components combine to make the water molecule and the, the, car, the uh, chains are joined by means of the oxygen here. Very similar to what we've seen in the other kinds of molecules we've talked about. Fats and oils have a general structure like this. Okay, We have the glycerol part of the molecule and then the fatty acid tails. This is called a triglyceride because it has three fatty acid chains attached to a glycerol. A glycerol. You can see these are saturated fatty acids here. There are no double bonds between carbons. This fatty acid, though, is an unsaturated fatty acid because it does have one double bond right there. Oftentimes when you see structural formulas of lipids, you'll see that some of the chains are straight and some are bent like this, and the bend is because of that double bond. Saturated fats, dietarily speaking, are more harmful for your body. They have a tendency to form plaques in your blood vessels, which can lead to cardiovascular disease. Unsaturated fats, on the other hand, are less likely to cause health problems. There are several categories of unsaturated fats. Monounsaturated fats have only one double bond, and oftentimes these are considered to be the healthiest kinds of fats. Polyunsaturated have multiple double bonds, so they have two, three, or more double bonds in the hydrocarbon chain. Now one specific kind of fatty acid that's really beneficial for a lot of things in your body are called omega-3 fatty acids. These have double bonds beginning after the third carbon from the methyl end of the chain. This uh, is an essential fatty acid that is not synthesized by humans, so it's necessary in the diet for you to be healthy. A lot of the omega-3 fatty acids come from fish oils and other kinds of products like that. Phospholipids are the main part of cell membranes. They are very similar to fats. They are made of glycerol. They have two fatty acids, but on the third carbon of the glycerol molecule, there's a phosphate group attached. The hydrophilic phosphate end, this part is hydrophilic, it is polar, uh, and, the, and the hydrophobic fatty acid tail 
forms what we call a, hydro, a phospholipid bilayer, double layer that, that is uh, soluble in water or doesn't repel water on both sides, but in the middle it does. This is really important for keeping this cell enclosed in, t in this tight membrane. We will talk more about the membrane structure in our next unit when we talk about cells. S the steroids are another category of phospholipids. These are a carbon skeleton containing four fused rings. This includes cholesterol and lots of other hormones that are called steroid hormones, including testosterone and estrogen we talked about earlier. Here's the basic structure of, of uh, cholesterol. It's similar in structure somewhat to testosterone and estrogen. They have a couple of more rings up here, but they're, the steroid hormones, among, of, of which there are several in the human body, are all based around cholesterol with a few added things. There are also things called anabolic steroids. These are synthetic variants of testosterone. Now, testosterone causes a buildup of muscle and bone mass, and so if you, if you make a synthetic variant of that, it's going to mimic some of those effects. They are sometimes used as prescription medications to treat certain conditions for a limited amount of time. But if you use them for a prolonged time, it causes a lot of negative effects. One of the major effects is shrinking of the testicles, infertility, negative personality changes. These are things to be avoided. So uh, anabolic steroids, while they're beneficial in some medical conditions, are generally speaking not good things for you to take for a prolonged period of time. This concludes the notes on lipids. So when you finish taking your notes, click on the link to the Google form and complete the Google form uh, about the reflections on the lipids notes.